Hey everyone, thanks for joining in. Just getting ready to do some painting and chilling tonight. Primed this uh, tactical marine about an hour ago. Was hoping to work on him a little bit tonight during the stream, but it looks like his primer is still drying out. So it'll probably have to be later on. Definitely making good progress, though. I sure like the way that Sheen is covering the model. When I hit it with the uh, Liquitex as a Zenithal, that should look pretty good. But yeah, bit by bit, that's how we get there. Well, how's everyone doing? Second day of the week, everyone making it back to work okay? Yeah, definitely a uh, wild time kicking off the week. Yep, bit by bit, that's how we get there, all right. <laughs> yep. Bit by bit. Let's see. While we got people joining in, let's work on a couple of our outstanding models. This figure right here will eventually be a uh, Sart Jump Assault uh, Intercessor, or I'll proxy him as such. But I'll, uh, yeah, pretty well only save him as uh, someone going up against Horde armies, maybe Tyranids, the occasional orc, but uh, otherwise he won't be... Uh, I don't know, it's more like a pride piece rather than uh, someone who will be taking center stage in most of my armies. I have a magnetized uh, marine for that, a magnetized sergeant, so this is yeah, more of a, you know, a little puff piece, feel good piece. But yeah, sure feel good looking at uh, how I've done him along the way. So yeah, that's nice. Let's see, thinking about how I want to finish painting him. What I'll probably do is... Oh, hey, Big Nerd, thanks for joining us tonight. What I'll probably do is uh, go with some kind of gunmetal gray on the harness. That could look real nice. Let's see what we got. Got Grey Knight Steel, that'll go nice for the chain sword. So I should probably do some kind of dark grey to contrast the light gold. And I'll just give it a little pop. So here we go, Lead Belcher should be a good one for that. So let's go ahead and... Oh hey, Toxic Creeper, thanks for the follow, I appreciate it. Yes, Austin, Lead Belcher is amazing. It is such a good paint. Very versatile, too. So there we go. Let's just thin that out a little bit. And we'll just start hitting the harness. And away we go. Let's go it nice and slow. Bit by bit. That's how we get there, you know. Nice and slow. Painting's supposed to be a relaxing hobby, you know. So there we go. That's the top. Let's do the other side. Yep. 
Yes, I sure love Lead Belcher. Well, hey, we're already at 600 likes. Thank you all so much. That's probably the fastest we got over 500. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that's a good-looking harness. Austin asks, how do I have such good light, my man? Every time my phone light hits my minis, they look like poo. Well, my man, I shall tell you. It's because I am not using my phone light. I am using two lights, neither of which are my phone. I have a, a table-mounted a uh, lamp and phone holder that I got off Amazon was only like 10 bucks. And uh, yeah, it just plugs into a little uh, USB-C charger uh, here on the back. And uh, this is just another ordinary desk lamp that I picked up off Walmart, something like 10 bucks too. Uh, the reason why I chose to have two lamps uh, was to get a better, well, like you just noticed, uh, to get better lighting. Uh, what I really like is called zenithal highlighting, which is uh, touching up all the different points light hits a model. Uh, here's a good example of that. So what I do is I set up my two lamps at two different points on the model and get an idea of how the light hits it. And then I kind of mark off uh, where the lights hit, and then that's where I uh, hit. That's where I do the different amounts of shading, based on how the lights hit it. So ideally, say when I take it to, say the local tabletop, you know somebody will look at it and think, you know, that the lighting reflects uh, how uh, it should look on the tabletop. Granted, that is kind of dependent on, uh, oh yeah, Austin, sure, happy to help. But yeah, 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 this thing was only like 10 bucks on Amazon. If you search uh, phone mount plus, oh wait, uh, what, what was it? Table phone mount? Oh hey, big nerd, thanks for the fire and corn, I sure appreciate it. But yeah, Austin, uh, it should just be a, uh, Ten dollar product on Amazon. I think you have the key phrases you have to search for are table mount, uh, phone holder, and desk lamp. Uh, any combination of those three phrases should uh, bring this up. And uh, if you're looking at a you know a second desk lamp as well, I would say. Let's see. This one has something called a like a. Architect hinge? Or I think the key word you want to use on Amazon is something like architect lamp, architect hinge, because uh, like most normal lamps can't get in really close. So this has like a bunch of different hinges to try to bring that light as close to a specific area as possible. So, uh, yeah, I can pull it real forward. I can pull it lean back. Oh, I guess another thing, if you search, is Pixar lamp. Uh, that'll probably bring it up, because that's what that uh, lamp from the Pixar movies are. Yeah, sure thing. Happy to help. Let me know if Pixar lamp brings up anything. I am very curious if that, if that works. <laughs> Awesome possum. Maybe in a few minutes. Well, hey, we're already at 1,100 likes for tonight. Thank you all so much. Awesome. Thanks, Austin. Let's see. Also, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, I probably need to get my Inceptors done more than... Uh, you know, a little puff piece I could stick on a desk, so maybe I'll, you know, since I already have the harness on this guy, 
maybe I'll uh, move over to uh, this Inceptor real quick, because uh, I don't have any in any of my lists right now. Oh, sweet! First item pop up! Awesome! All right, well, let's see what kind of progress we can get on this heavy bolter. Oh, that looks a little too thick. There we go. Nice. Oh, that is looking so good. Nice and smooth. Yeah, they don't kid around when they tell you thin your paints. Oh, I guess that is probably one of the biggest things that a, you know, early or new Warhammer artists run into. Everyone says thin your paints. Nobody says how to thin your paints. Or how much is too thin or not thin enough. That was definitely something I'd run into where you know, I'd look at my paints and I'd say, wow, yeah, that's real thin. I'm worried that it's too thin. And then I'd post it on, on Reddit and people would say, my guy, you need to thin your paints. I was like, how much thinner can this possibly get? <laughs> but yeah, the key is... Uh, you know, as I now learned, uh, skim milk. Not whole milk, not 2%. Gotta go for skim. Allegedly, it's the healthy milk anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think I'd rather die than drink skim. <laughs> Austin says, I usually don't just dip the brush and go and hope my shade... Hits the imperf and hides the imperfections. Yes, sometimes I do. I'll admit I do do that from time to time. Just depends sometimes. Bit by bit. Bit by bit. That's how we get there, you know. Coming along bit by bit. Bit by bit. That's how we get there. Just take a little off the pot. Ooh, Austin says, I tried to freehand the Lamenters logo on my Chapter Master and did not go as planned. Yes, I can say that it took me about two years 
Just constant practice before I felt good about freehanding. Even then, I'll still uh, take shortcuts, like uh, using the uh, transfer sheet and making a grid around it, rather than go full freehand. Just a little safer sometimes. At the end of the day, you're painting your models for you, so you have to do what you feel good about. Yes, Austin, you'll get there someday. I'll get there someday, too. <laughs> now, for this guy, I actually did kind of try molding in, uh, molding it with green stuff. Came out okay, but not great. I was also trying to do a heart on the chest uh, for the Aguila. Came out okay, but yeah, I wouldn't say it was amazing. Looks okay. Looked better before I painted over it. <laughs> yeah, here it is on one of the other uh, Inceptors I did. This heart looks a little better. This heart looks a little like a heart <laughs> see and here's the one I did on the last inceptor this chest heart probably looks the most like a heart this shoulder heart probably the lumpiest but definitely looks like a heart <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about green stuff is, uh, you know, it binds itself right to the model. So, yeah. I'm quite fond of, well, as I'm slowly learning green stuff, I've been enjoying it. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a learning process. Nice. Well, while that's drying, let's work on his chest. What I plan on doing eventually is, uh, you know, something like I did on uh, this, uh, shoot, what's it called? Aggressor, where I painted the whole thing gold first. Uh, but I painted the heart red. Yeah, this heart actually came out looking pretty nice, so I was very happy with that. Yeah, I tried to do that on a few Termies and Gravis Marines. Uh, mixed results. Some, some of it looks good, some of it doesn't. Uh, looks pretty good on uh, this aggressor. Maybe I suppose... Uh, looks okay. Hmm. Yeah, just okay. Not great. There we go. <laughs> Let's see. Austin asks, Does painting over pink make the dark spots? I have seen you... I have seen on your account spring a pinkish. Yes, yes. That's usually what I'm doing. Uh, do I have a good... Okay, here's a recent example that kind of looks... That you can kind of see because I haven't fully sprayed it. So, uh, here on the underside of this uh, Vindicator, you can see, uh, you know, you can see some pink. You can see a little bit of white. What I did was I primed it pink first. Uh, the type of pink I used for that one was this uh, what? Uh, Tamiya Pink Primer. Uh, very important to go with a primer rather than pink paint because uh, primers form the basis for how you paint. Then after that, 
as so you'll notice that uh, the little bit of white you can see is pretty thin. So uh, the reason it is so thin is because I zenithaled it with this acrylic ink. And uh, oh yeah, uh, explaining the term uh, zenithal, it's that uh, light source thing I was talking about earlier where uh, you stick a lamp uh, as the initial light and you say, okay, how do I want this model to look based on how the light's hitting it? That's a z And then you paint it to match that. So that's a zenithal. And then uh, after that uh, was coated with the pink ink, I then went it after it in some of the darkest spots with familiar pink because I knew that's where the darkest shadows would be. Uh, you can see it on this model a little easier. Those super dark orange spots are uh, where the shadows were. So I said, okay, that's where I want the most of that dark pink to hit. So then when I hit it with the yellow ink and the yellow primer, no, excuse me, yellow paint or yellow ink, uh, that's how you get these uh, transitional colors from the uh, bright yellow where the light hits its strongest to these uh, darker oranges where the lights hit it the weakest. So yeah, worked out quite nicely. So for the Vindicator tank, you know, I looked at it, I said, okay, where does the, where's the highest, oops, where's the highest points of the line? I said, okay, yep, the top, where does the, where's the highest, oops, Where's the highest points of the line? I said, okay, at the top, obviously. And I said, okay, these elements right here uh, are where the darkest shadows are under the steps on the ladder. That's where I want it to be the darkest. So that's why I sprayed it with this uh, dark pink. So yeah, it's it was a fun painting process for sure. what I try to do with this uh, tank gunner, but it ended up looking, uh, well, I guess now I can kind of see it, but I remember, you know, putting my, uh, uh, shading over it, uh, shading wash, and I remember thinking, ooh, that looks pretty darn orange. <laughs> it does look pretty orange still. <laughs> Not that orange is a bad thing, but I was going for yellow. I guess kind of like I was doing with this D&D uh, uh, &D miniatures cloak. I used a lot of those same techniques. And uh, we have some bright high points where the light hits it. And then we have these darker oranges and reds where the uh, natural folds of the cape are. But yeah, I'll have to finish this guy sometime was real happy with how it came out. Well, with how the cape came out. <laughs> Just checking on my compressor. It looked like it stopped charging. Okay, good, it's at full charge. Yeah, he's battle hardened. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, where was, it? oh yeah, uh, I do, I am hoping to Zenithal the sky tonight, so that's why I keep checking on the primer. It's almost dry. I should probably give it like another, what, 10, 15 minutes before I dare ink him? Yeah, that's probably the smarter thing to do. <laughs> yeah. You can cover up a lot of things with paint, but, you know, if you're not careful and you make a mistake, 
that can be a mess. <laughs> Let's check this guy. Maybe what we'll do while we wait is, uh, yeah, it's a hard wait for sure. Maybe what I'll do is a little bit of trim on this uh, red Corsair. Just do a couple drops. I'm just gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna use the primer as the actual paint on the trim because uh, that actually kind of matches the trim of the red Corsair a little closer than the uh, than any kind of black or gray I've seen that I have. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water. Gonna siphon off a little spot to do some mixing. Let's take our brush, load it with water. And let's try to get a milky consistency. Might be a little harder because this is a pretty thick primer. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So let's just slowly and carefully apply this on the trim. That's one thing I heard makes uh, doing Chaos Space Marines real hard is uh, all the trim work you have to do. too thick. Let's dab a little bit of that off. Oop. Yes, the day I feel I'm a master painter, I'll dare start trying to paint Death Guard. <laughs> I'm a man of many talents, but, uh, man, that bronze and rust work, that is real commitment of detail right there that I don't feel like I can deliver on. Let's see, there's a painter I really like here on TikTok named Juan El Minitorista. Uh, he posted a video today of him doing a beautiful moth-inspired Mortarion. What do I mean, moth-inspired? Mortarion is a moth. Uh, he took uh, images of real colorful butterflies, and he used that to model the mor Mortarion he was painting. See, I don't remember his uh, TikTok handle, but uh, if you search Juan El Minotaurista, he'll show up. It's uh, the video he posted today. There we go. That is some okay trim. <laughs> Oh, got a little smudge up here. I'll have to touch that up. Yeah. Now that I'm doing this, uh, yeah, I can see why I was never really attracted to Chaos Armies. This is a lot of trim. Let's use the side of our brush to go in. Very carefully. Oh. 
Oops. Well, I guess I'll paint the whole forehead gray then. <laughs> like I said, lots of trim. Well, he does look kind of menacing. Oh, corn. This is not a corn berserker. This is just a corn inspired legionary. Very specifically, a Red Corsair. So one of uh, Huron Blackheart's infamous band of merry men. Thank you. I primed him here on a live stream a few weeks ago. Three weeks? Maybe closer to one week. It's doing this trim that's uh, had me uh, hesitant. I was trying a different uh, red uh, airbrush recipe, and it came out really good. I was really happy with it, but I was looking at all this trim, and I said, oh, this will be hard. And it is. <laughs> so I am really inspired by all of you Chaos players who have the patience and skill to pull it off, especially Nurgle players. Lots of rust. And I know rust isn't easy. Oh, hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh yeah, let's get the spot I missed on the forehead. Nice. Coming along slowly but good. Oh, hey, maybe what I'll do instead of covering up that little black dot is, uh, you know, reversing the trim color, make it a red trim with a black dot. Making sure I'm not touching the trim. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Nice. Bit by bit, that's how we get there. Oh, very nice. Really like how that's coming together. Gotta keep moving along that trim. Using the side of my brush to hit the raised edges. That one was a little too thick. But yeah, it's coming along okay. I 
Fearsome Red Corsair. Oh, here on Blackheart would be, I think, decently pleased with this. <laughs> I think I'll do bone color for this skull on, on the pauldron and this one on the left leg. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, Austin, thanks for sticking out uh, as long as you could. I hope you and your better half enjoy your movie. Thanks again. Oh, uh, usually these lives are uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll put a little, uh, uh, little calendar event on my uh, TikTok page. Awesome. Thank you. Enjoy your movie. Well, hey, 1,200 likes. Thank you so much. Nice way to chill in the evening. Wow, 1300 We got there quick. Thank you. Fourteen hundred. Wow. Well, hey, 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 that makes me feel real special. Appreciate it, you guys. Gray Soul, thanks for joining us tonight. Just painting and chilling. Got to get this little arrow a little better. Nice. I can get that a little better still. There we go. Oh, that looks good. Oh, hey, 1,700 likes? You guys are amazing. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm real happy with how this red Corsair is coming along. This kind of looks like this is meant to be trimmed. So let's get that back flat real quick. 1900 i think this is the fastest i've ever gotten in 1900 thank you all so much Wow! Woo -hoo -hoo. 
thank you. Really, I really mean it. Thank y'all so much. John Griffin, thank you so much for rocking it out as long as you could. You rock too, and I look forward to seeing you Thursday night. Thank you, thank you. here on Blackheart because his reinforcements are coming off the port bow! Arrgh! Oh, very nice. I'll tell you what, that is a grumpy pirate. It scares me some, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Try to get some of this pipe work. Oh yes, a gruesome, fearsome pirate. Oh, let's get that left leg trim a little bit. Oh, very nice, very nice. Definitely have to do a little bit of touch up with Mephiston Red, probably. Mephiston, yeah, Mephiston will probably look nice with that shading. But I would say that it's, uh, some decent looking trim overall. I am definitely convinced not to uh, start up a Chaos Army anytime soon though, but uh, I can definitely appreciate the art. And more importantly, have a hand, you know, just a handful of minis to complete my uh, Bad Ab War series. Let me show it off while I got this drying. So obviously, I already have uh, Lamenters for days. Uh, but for the other Maelstrom Warders, right now all I got is uh, a Mantis Warrior that I painted up the other night. Uh, in addition to lots and lots of Lamenters, I also have a Minotaur. I actually have a few Minotaurs painted, but, uh, you know, this one I specifically made a Tactical Marine just so I could have it as uh, something to do some uh, Bad Ab War content. This fella right here... Uh, once he's done, uh, his primer's done drying, I'm going to try to turn him into a red scorpion. I got some Gravelord Grey uh, paint to try out. If it ends up looking uh, too bright, though, uh, instead of a, a red scorpion, I'll make him a Carcadon. Yeah, there we go. I think that's how you say it, Carcadon. But yeah. If nothing else, uh, maybe two coats of this primer be enough for uh, Red Scorpions. A second coat just to kind of make it smooth because this did uh, come on a little rough. That's on me, though, for not uh, thinning it enough, though. Ethan Robertson, thanks for joining us. We're just talking about uh, primers right now. Yeah, when you're working with a spray primer, you know, I can usually thin out the proacryl white pretty good. 
it's only a two to one mix. But, uh, you know, I have a hard time perfecting uh, the ratio of thinner to paint for dark neutral gray. I've tried two to one, I've tried three to one. Four to one is too much, so the secret sauce is something like three and a half to one. But yeah, if you're measuring halves of droplets of thinner, halves of droplets of paint, that's uh, that's not a fun time. <laughs> Darth Slapchop, thanks for joining us. Slapchop as in Slapchop painting? I love using Slap Chop. It's a fun way to get some good depth in the minis. Almost all of my Dark Angels use some kind of uh, Slap Chop in them. Yeah, Slap Chop is a real fun way to get paint going. But yeah, this guy is... Oh, hmm. Maybe it is good. Mm. Well, I kind of feel like risking it. You guys feel like risking it? All right, Oscar the Panda has it right. Blood for the blood god. Skulls for the skull throne. Ho, ho, ho. Mm. This isn't a world eater. This is a red corsair, but man, he has the right spirit. We got the red. We got the gray. Yeah, he'd be ready to lead us in a chaos. Mm. You know what? Maybe before. Yeah, yeah. Here's what I'll do. I will zenithal this guy with the ink real quick, and while we're waiting for that to dry, we'll work on the skull trim for uh, the Red Corsair. That's what we'll do. So let me put this all up. Bit by bit. There we go. One mini, two mini, three mini, four, five mini, six mini, seven mini more. Let's move the Inceptor. We'll pull this guy up to the front, adjust my lighting. There we go, tighten that screw. All right. Let's see. We're not going to do a real heavy uh, zenithal, so we'll probably be able to get away with maybe four drops of Liquitex. We'll want to set our compressor fairly high. Let's do 40 PSI. All right. Get a little more slack in the hose. Make sure our funnels open fairly wide. You know, the idea isn't that we blast it with ink and that it puddle, but that we slowly build up layers bit after bit. So that's why we're only going to start with four drops of Liquitex. So here we go. Let's count it out together. One, two, three, four. We'll do a backflow test. There we go. That's our bubbles. Let's do a spray test. Just be safe. Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, there we go. That's some nice white. Let's lock in our light sources. There we go. And now we'll slowly do layer after layer. Don't pull the trigger. We want to squeeze the trigger. 
yeah, you can already see them uh, whitening up a little bit. We're going in the direction where the light is coming. Oscar the Panda, thanks for following. So you move this light a little back so it's not hitting as I spray. There we go. Thin layer after thin layer. We'll just keep it where it's at. And we'll just keep going back and forth. Back and forth. The trick is to use your elbow to go back and forth instead of your wrist. Sorry, I have to move, stretch my arm a bit. I think this might be it. Here we go. Well, that is looking good. Very happy with how this came out. Nice. Yep, we got a few splotches here and there, but you know, when we hit it with the, you know, the light, that should make the transition from dark gray to white to different gray pretty easy. I like how we got some of this. Uh, you know, we can see our white highlights and our gray shadows, so that should be a fairly smooth transition. Let's put in a couple drops of airbrush cleaner just to make sure our uh, our brush doesn't uh, the ink inside doesn't dry up. That will ruin your airbrush, and that'll ruin it real bad. There we go. Spray out the mess. Looking nice. Try it out. Stick a lit. We'll take this, uh, off and then we can just stick that cleaner down in there directly. Just a couple of easy drops. Nice. And then we'll spray. Nice and clean.
perfect. I'm gonna start charging that compressor again real quick. All right. And let's see, while that dries, we're gonna be working on the trim of this uh, Red Corsair. We'll be mixing up a little bit of bone paint. Uh, we'll start with Morgast, uh, what's it called, Morgast Bone. And then eventually we're gonna give it a uh, Skeleton Horde Wash. And then just do some light touch-ups, edge highlighting with uh, Wraith Bone. So let's grab those three paints real quick. We'll need the Wraith, oh, drop that. We'll need the Wraith Bone right there. Stick it here up front so everyone can see it. Let's see, let me move some things around while I look for that uh, skeleton horde and the morgast. Okay, here is a skeleton horde. Lancer, thanks for sharing the live. I appreciate it. So here we go. Uh, Wraithbone. A skeleton horde and let's see, Morgast bone. Where is that? Corax white could be nice for a few dot highlights. We'll just stick it here to the side. Let's see. Maybe I should start <laughs> storing these paints alphabetically. <laughs> Oh, that'd be funny. Let's see, what is this? Oh no, that's Kislev's, Kislev Flesh. That's a nice one, but not what we need right now. Let's see, Morgast Bone. What's this, Retributor Gold. Nice, but not what we're looking for. See, I do have a couple other boxes, so let me check there. Oh, is this it? Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Morgus Bone. Perfect. Let's see, let me grab my paint mixer from the other room. You don't need to use paint mixers, but boy, they're sure nice to have. right here. Let's see, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. Be right back.
All right, sorry about that. All right, let's start mixing those paints. I'm really fond of vortex spinners. Wow, I like what it's doing to the camera. <laughs> Is that mixed enough? Let's check. Uh, still a little clumpy. Let's stick it back. Archangel Kyal, greetings. How are you doing since Saturday night? Oh yeah, Dark Angel Kyal, uh, he is working on getting his uh, thousand subs so he can start streaming too. Everyone here should go uh, follow him. Give him a follow. We need more Dark Angels representation here on TikTok. Thick paint, all right. I think that's about the consistency we're looking for. Let's go ahead and do our wraith bone next. I have a mixing ball in here, and I gave it a good shake the other day. I use it a little more frequently than the Morgas bone, so it shouldn't need as much. T. Kelly, mate, thanks for joining us. Dark Angel Kial says, I'm all right, reassembling models. Nice. Nate, hello, hello. How's it going? Yes, Nate, Blood Angel or Lamenters are the best Blood Angel successors. In my extremely biased opinion. <laughs> oh, that is a nice smooth consistency. Since we're gonna be doing dot highlights with Corax White, let's go ahead and mix that too. Dark Angel Kia says uh, that he's pre-assembling his model so he can paint individual parts so you don't mess up the paint where you don't want it. Very good strategy. Sub-assemblies are, you know, one of the key things I'll do for characters. Uh, 
you know, sometimes for smaller troops, if I'm doing bear heads, I'll do a little sub-assembly for the face. Oh yeah, like I got for this uh, Blood Angels Terminator I'm slowly working on. I got most the face, most of the vampiric face painted, but uh, definitely still have uh, ways to go before I dare uh, stick them on my turny. <laughs> Nice. Let's see, just because I'm a little scared of the Morgas bone, I'll just do a uh, mix in just a little bit more. I haven't had the best of luck with Morgas bone in the past, so. Ooh, Dark, Dark Angel's Cal says he's gonna make Tyranids in the future. That's awesome. See, if you live near a Warhammer store, you can get one of those, uh, shoot, what are they called? Psychogonts? That's going to be the free mini of the month this month. So let's just take one small scoop of Morgas Bone. I won't need a lot. Well, I took too much. <laughs> I won't need a lot since uh, we'll be using the... Oh, I'm just using it in two spots. Oh, you're like an hour away from one. Got it. Let's load up our brush with water. And then we'll do a good mixing. Let's see, an hour. Let's see, is that too far to try to get the free mini? Oh, that's probably a little too thin. That should be okay. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's start with this big one. Yeah, it's like a smidge too thin. Let's try to soak up some of this excess. Oh, you drive 45 minutes for work. So what's another 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Us Americans, we sure love to drive. Ooh, that is definitely too thin. Let's try to soak that up. Let's see, Nate, what I'm working on right now is a single red Corsair. Uh, I have this small little Badab War thing I got going on right now uh, for funsies. So I'm just, uh, you know, this is obviously the actual claws uh, after they go full tilt chaos. And uh, here on Blackheart becomes the infamous Pirate Lord. Yeah, being a pirate can be fun sometimes. <laughs> where can I read about the Badab War? Well, where is the best place to start? I'm sure if you just... Google it, you'll find like five or six different uh, Warhammer lore tubers, uh, accounts of it. You know, you'll find everything from Lutin to Major Kill to... Actually, I think those are the two big ones. <laughs> yeah, uh, any uh, Warhammer lore tuber uh, should have like some kind of 
video, either, you know, 15 minutes to 45 minutes long about the different sides of the Badab War, how it escalated, and most importantly, why it's important to not pay your taxes. And I am instantly going to retract that statement because I don't want to be attacked by the IRS. <laughs> General uh, Radin asks, have I done any Night Lords? Yes. Any Night Lords yet? Yes, I have. Let me pull them out. Uh, I did this guy back when the uh, Chaos Marines were the mini of the month, like, what, year and a half ago? So... Uh, so I've done, uh, so I've become a lot better painter since I did this guy. Mate, yes, or be attacked by minotaurs. Yeah, minotaurs are real scary. Oscar the Panda, thanks for subscribing, I appreciate it. So, yes, uh, General Radan. Uh, I did this guy like a year and a half ago. Uh, I was trying out a couple different contrast paints, but, uh, you know, if I were to do it again today, uh, I guarantee I would look a lot better. <laughs> but still, at the time, when I did it a year and a half ago, I was really proud of how it came out. Especially since I was trying, uh, you know, modeling and, uh, posing, so I was real happy to get this Lamenter pistol. Uh, here on the base as a kind of like a diorama showing off how vicious the Night Lords are. Uh, Oscar the Panda asks, uh, what's my main army and what do I play as? I My main army are the Lamenters, and that's who I play as too. I am really fond of these sad yellow boys with all the bad luck. <laughs> Yep, they have bad luck. They lose a lot of the time. But every time I lose, I say I'm uh, contributing to Warhammer lore because Lamenters very notoriously lose a lot. <laughs> uh, General Random. Yep, based Lamenter main. Thank you. Every time I lose, I know, hey, I'm uh, that. That's what I chose. Oscar the Panda asks, any Age of Sigmar? Not yet. I was seriously considering a, uh, what's it called? Skaven Army not too long ago. Because I figured uh, it'd be a good thing to start and get some units for not only it, but also uh, the Old World. But then uh, Games Workshop announced that... Uh, uh, for the short term, they were only going to be doing uh, Bretonian Tomb Kings for Old World. So I said, maybe I'll just hold off a bit. So if I do start a Skaven army, it'll just be for uh, Age of Sigmar. Let's see, General Radon says, as a Night Lord guy, I'd feel ya. I'll, we always lose two. Which is a shame, too, because that Night Lord series is really good. Yeah, I checked out the Night Lord Omnibus not too long ago. That is a good story. Sevatar and all them. I'm sure we'll be seeing uh, more, more Night Lords developments in the near future, though, because of that kill team they got recent... or Well, that was announced recently. Oscar the Panda says he's only played one 40k game and two Age of Sigmar games. Only got, I've only one game. Oh, General Radon says that he just bought the Omnibus, currently at the Soul Hunter chapter. Nice. What do you think of it so far? Oh, yeah, Nate. Sanguinius would be sad to see the luck of the Lamenters. They are... The sad boys. For sure. Let's 
while we wait for these skulls to dry, I'll go ahead and work on his uh, gun a little bit. General Radon says, I love the dread and brutality. Might even call myself edgy because of it. Yeah, that's the thing about Night Lords. There is no middle ground with them. You know exactly where you stand with them, because if they don't like you, they'll skin you right away. <laughs> So let's use Lead Belcher for that gun. Oh, yeah, they'll wear you, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that new Dark Angel... Pfft, Night Lord's Kill Team. Don't they have, a, like, an ancient who's uh, a flayed person on it? I think the leader, Sergeant Warlord, whatever it's called, he had the human skin uh, cape, too. Ah, uh, Nate says, the Blood Angels are pretty much Night Lords that tame themselves not to let Sanguinius down. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Some kind of unhealthy mix between Night Lords and uh, World Eaters. Especially when they hit the Black Rage. Let me tell you, those uh, Death Company Marines are really good on table... Well, most of the dead... Death Company Marines are pretty good on tabletop. Death Company with Jetpack and Lamartis are really good. Death Company Dreadnought's really good. It's a better Brutalis. And a little cheaper, too, I might add. Uh, Death Company Marines, uh, just the non-Jetpack ones, are not good. At 130 points for a squad of five. Not when you can get intercessors with their uh, sticky objectives for, what is it, 75 points right now, I think? No, 80 points. Uh, assault intercessors are 75. I think. Well, I'm at least within five points of it, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, intercessors might be 80, assault intercessors. Wait, no, 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 no. Assault Intercessors are the cheaper ones. So they might be 80. Regular Intercessors might be 85. Oh, General Radon asks, is the Kill Team an official miniature set? It will be. They announced it at a... Shoot, what was it? The Las Vegas event a couple months ago. So they're working on it. It's not out yet, but it will be official once it comes out. Let's see. Oscar the Panda says he has the... He's going to paint the uh, Space Marine half of his Leviathan set as Arizona Iced Tea. That's awesome. They have such a not that's such a nice color scheme. I can't wait to see it. They are trying to make the drink go back to 99 cents instead of a dollar 25 or whatever. That's good. I'll tell you what. That company runs a real tight ship for managing to keep it that low for so many decades. Good American business, I'll tell you what. Nice. Especially in the tall can, yep. Let's see, I think I need to let this bone dry a little bit longer. So maybe I will... Oh, General Radon says the Night Angels news is the most exciting news he's heard yet. Going to pair them at, up with the con, uh, Contacar Terminators. Nice. Yeah, that's one thing I really like about the Kill Team boxes. Uh, they've been able to lately focus on some real niche teams like the Chaos Beastmen, the, a few different variants of the Hearthkins. Uh, let's see. They got the Groot 
no, the Croot with a K before the uh, actual Croot refresh. So that was nice. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a minute. So while we do that, we'll work on our a next coat of gray for the red scorpion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my airbrush glove on. Got to protect the skin. Beefalo, thanks for joining us. You have an awesome name. Oop, just broke my glove. I mean, uh, it's probably time to change the glove anyway because uh, look at all that paint on it. So what I'll do is I'll mix up some gray in here. I'm gonna take uh, maybe two drops of thinner, two drops of speed paint medium, and then four drops of the uh, what's this thing called? Grave Lord Gray. There we go. So here we go. Speed paint medium. Let's see. One drop, two drop, three drop. There we go. We'll do three drops of everything. Thinner. One, two, three. Let's see, General Radon asks, do I know how long these sets would release after a reveal? I'm sad to say that is entirely up to Games Workshop. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm afraid they move at their own pace. Thomas Fox, thanks for following us tonight. I appreciate it. Just in time to watch us uh, Zenithal this uh, uh, Red Scorpion. Let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sometimes Game Workshop can deliver. Here we go, let's turn on our airbrush at 30 PSI. Gotta stick the pot on here real quick. Nice. Let's tighten our feet a little bit because I wanna keep that white head uh, mostly white when I hit it with the flesh, flesh color. Perfect. Now we'll pour this into the pot. Nice. All right. Let's do a quick test spray. Just make sure it works. You want to press it down and slowly pull the trigger back. Oh, okay. There we go. That was not slow, but it worked. <laughs> But yeah, that looks about the right shade of gray for a red scorpion. So here we go. Let's start with this backpack. And we'll slowly pull back the trigger as we go side to side. Oh, there we go. There we go, we're slowly hitting the model. That's a nice looking gray, I'll tell you what. I am curious if uh might have been better not to put that speed paint medium in there though, because it is looking kind of washed. It is kind of turning into a nice gray, though. See, we're just about out of paint, so 
already actually, yeah. <laughs> so maybe what I'll do is, yeah, once this runs out, I'll do another coat and try to darken it up a little more. Won't use that speed paint medium this time. definitely a nice gray. Yeah, if I don't thin it down so much, it'll probably get us over the line. Oh, there's more in there than I thought. <laughs> There we go. Well, that was a pretty thin coat, so once that dries, we'll be able to hit that uh, again real soon. Let me just put a drop of airbrush cleaner in there. That way we don't, uh, you know, gum up our insides. Three drops should be enough. And then we'll spray it out. Nice. All right. So I'll go ahead, turn this off, and I'll put it back on the charger. And then let's give it maybe 10, 15 minutes and we'll, we'll try another coat of gray. That's one of the secrets of using an airbrush. You just go thin layer by thin layer. Let's see. Uh, Nate asks, what other Blood Angel successors do I like? Um... I like, I kind of like the Flesh Terrors. Um, more specifically, I like Gabriel Seth. I think Gabriel Seth is a really tragic character. And I really like his whole, uh, how he gives himself the mission of, uh, you know, ensuring the uh, mission of the chapter, you know, at their own cost, because, uh, you know, they feel like, you know, as bad as the uh, Black Rage is, you know, they're more inclined to look at it realistically and say, hey, it defines who we are. Yeah, Gabriel is a really good character. Yeah, classic, tragic Shakespearean character. Uh, yeah, he's like uh, Captain Tycho, but with uh, he's still all around live. I'm sure Captain, if the uh, flesh terrors were around when uh, Captain Tycho was alive, uh, you know he could have fit in really well with them. What's uh, kind of sad and kind of funny is. Uh, that Captain Tycho, the character, was already dead uh, before his miniature was introduced. And yet, for whatever reason, Games Workshop keeps putting him in codexes. I'm still surprised that uh, he made it into 10th edition. Not complaining, though, because he's the only model who can lead uh, Death Company Marines. Uh, foot Death Company Marines. Uh, Lamartes is the only one who can lead Jetpack Marines. Jetpack Death Company Marines. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. So this coat is looking about dry, so let's go ahead and hit it with that Skeleton Horde. We'll move our Red Scorpion back, put this guy back in the limelight, and we'll pull out our Skeleton Horde. Put this guy down so I can open the pot. Pop! All right. And then I will give it a generous wash. Let's see. Nate asks how long I've been into the hobby. Let's see. I guess I... About three years now? I kind of known that Warhammer has been a thing for ten years. 
just kind of like one of those uh, background sci-fi things. I was a really big Star Wars fan, and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's just another sci-fi setting. Uh, then I started getting into Dune about four years ago. Oh, yeah, that skeleton horde is looking real nice. And I said, you know, I learned here on Reddit that, uh, hey, if you really like Dune, you might really like Warhammer. So I started looking into the lore. I was like, wow, this is a pretty cool lore. And then I started getting into the hobby because of the lore. And I said, hey, I kind of want to learn how to paint so I can uh, put little minis on my desk. Have them be a fun uh, conversation piece. And I started slowly doing that, getting better. Then I said, you know what? If I'm putting all this time and work into painting minis, I better learn how to play the game. And, uh, you know, then I started paint, uh, playing and painting more. And I was like, wow, I'm really invested in the hobby now. And it was a lot of fun. But yeah, this red Corsair is coming out real nice. Can't wait to hit it with the Wraith Bone. What got you into the hobby, Nate? So I'll put this guy down here real quick while that dries. Check on our... Oh, yeah, this is already almost dry. Yeah, that's looking real nice. I think we're just about there. Maybe give it a couple more minutes to dry. <laughs> Let's see, Nate says he's known about Warhammer since he was six, watching his uncles play and started building his first army at 23. That's so awesome. I'm glad you could turn it into a family hobby. Yeah, a few of my siblings are starting to get into Warhammer because I'm a fan of it. Let's see, where did I put that grave? Oh, yeah, here we go. Grave Lord Grey. I think we'll be good with uh, maybe four drops this time. And four drops of thinner. Maybe three drops of thinner. All right, four it is. <laughs> Dark Angel Kial has returned. Just in time for us to do our second coat of gray. Let's mix that up real quick. Keto 1976, thanks for joining us. There we go, 31 PSI. Let's load it into the cup. Well, hey, thanks for the likes, Dark Angel Kial. Here we go. Let's put our red Corsair out of the way so we don't turn him into a gray Corsair. <laughs> Do a quick spray test. There we go. And then here we go.
yeah, that's getting a nice little darker. Not too much. Yeah, showing some wear and tear, all right. Getting a nice even gray, but not a flat gray. Looking good, looking good. There we go. Well, I think that's about the gray we're looking for. So what I'll do is I'll work on the shoulders. Or actually what I'll probably do is give him a black wash. That'll probably be dark enough. We can just move on to the yellow trim and then we'll paint the insides of the pauldron black and Paint up the face uh, flesh colored and that'll probably be good enough. So let's make sure to remember to clean out our airbrush because a clean airbrush is a happy airbrush. Take good care of your painting tools and they'll take good care of you. dry a little bit. Let's see, where did I put that? Oh yeah, when we give that guy the wash, we'll want to uh, wash this uh, Minotaur too. So I'll put that there so I remember. Here is the Red Corsair. Let's see. That... Uh, bone looks pretty dry, so... Oh, Nate says it's we so weird how popular Warhammer has become in the past few years. I think we can probably thank Henry Cavill for that. As Henry Cavill's become more popular, he's talked more about Warhammer and uh, its influence on him, and I think that's probably where a lot of the interest is coming from. Be my guess, anyway. Lots of factors for sure, though, like uh, how dunes become popular. Oh yeah, Dark Angel Kial raises a good point. He's been in Warhammer for a while, but uh, he's just started diving deep into the hobby. Well, hey, we're just about at uh, 3,000 likes. Thank you all so much. Let's see how long it takes to get there. Let's see, I'll just take a little bit. Ooh, let's use a softer brush, actually. Oh, Cal says that he grew up with Space Marine on the Xbox 360. That is a fun game. I can't wait to see Space Marine 2. Oh, hey, 2,900. I bet we'll get to 3,000 in the next minute. Yeah, Space Marine 2 looks so cool. Very tempted to... Very tempted to get it when it comes out. Oh, you got Collector's Edition. That's rad. Here we go. Let's get these brow highlights. and smudge it. Then we'll do brow again. 
3,000 likes. Y'all are amazing. Sure appreciate ya. And then we'll do brow one more time and smudge it. Now that is some nice highlights. Then we'll go to the big skull. We'll do some brow highlights. Get the teeth and the rim, and then we'll smudge it. Gotta make it look like disgusting aged bone. And we'll smudge it again. Smudge. Yeah, there we go. That's a scary looking skull, all right. Just a little, maybe I'll paint that mat inside of that mouth. Flesh tears red. Let me pull that out real quick. Dark Tide, yes, that is also a fun game. Well, hey, we're already at 3,400 likes. Y'all are amazing. Thank you. So we'll just load up a little bit on the tip. And then we'll slowly pull it in there. There we go. Looks like a screaming mouth now. I think I'll also paint this uh, part of the gun uh, black, black Templar. Where is that? Here it is. Set that down real quick. Oh yeah, the Ogren are a lot of fun in the game. Here we go, let's get this casing. Well, it's coming on a little too thin. Looks more like uh, Nuln Oil. So I'll let that dry and uh, hit it again. Should have got Abaddon Black the other day. Check on this. Yep, looking good, looking good. Check on this guy real quick. Yep, looking good. Give him a... Yeah, that's a real smooth gray but not a flat gray look how the lights uh, bouncing off him i'm very happy with how this came out nice let's see where is my wash here we go in a little bit we'll be using uh the airbrush to paint uh both these models with a uh, black wash. Give it a good shake. Set that up top real quick. Should I give this guy a wash? No. Probably don't want to give him a black wash. Or if I do, I'll just do it by hand so I don't muddy up the bone work we did. So what I'll do is I'll paint a couple uh, brown wash on the red guy. That could look good. I got some uh, new flesh wash. Oh, what would look better? Flesh wash or sepia, you think? I'm thinking the flesh will look better on the bone, 
I'm thinking sepia will look better on the rest of the red, so maybe I'll go with the sepia. Yeah, exactly. So here we go. I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll do the sepia first on this guy. Give him a couple more minutes to dry on the gun. And then we'll do the black wash. Yes, I love Proacryl wash. It is so much fun. So what I'll do is I'll move these two guys to the side real quick so they don't get sepia -ed. Oh, I guess maybe while I wait for that to dry, I should work on this uh, bayonet. That way we don't have to uh, hit it again later. Uh, Christopher Hamilton Hat asks, why do I spray my wash? Um, it's actually a really new phenomenon. Uh, I've only just started doing it. I kind of like it because I feel like it uh, pools in the recesses uh, just a little faster. I'm still experimenting with it, so... You know, if I keep doing it a few more times, maybe I'll decide in the end that uh, I'd rather just do it with a brush. But when I'm doing batch work, it does speed things up a little bit. I wouldn't dare do it on a character, though. <laughs> no, but for these little troops, it's fine. There we go. That's a nice looking bayonet, I'll tell you what. Let's see, then I guess maybe I'll just try another coat of Black Templar while I wait. Bruce Bridges, thanks for joining us. Let's shake that again real quick. Well, hey, 4,300 likes. Sure appreciate you guys. Doobie, thanks for the follow. Dark Angel Kial reminds us about the three inch rule. If it looks good a little away, yeah. That's why I don't sweat some of the minutia sometimes. I do put more work into characters, though, just because, uh, you know, it's a point of pride. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Ooh, Christopher Hamilton, what is your uh, faction's paint style? Yeah, Dark Angel Cal, you're right. We do want to do good work on our models. Oh, Night Lords! Yeah, there was somebody else in here asking about Night Lords earlier. Uh, General Radon? Is he still here? He's not here anymore. But yeah, uh, he was talking about... Uh, he's uh, working on his Night Lords army. He's real excited about that new Night Lords kill team. And... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, getting through the Night Lord's omnibus right now. So, Christopher, this is a Night Lord I actually painted about a year and a half ago, back when uh, Chaos Legionaries were the free mini of the month. No, I really wanted to try uh, Night Lord, and it came out, I think, probably one of the best I could do a year and a half ago. <laughs> 
I'm happy to say I'm a lot better now, but, uh, you know, this was a point of pride, uh, this model, when uh, I did it a year and a half ago. That was also when I f started really first thinking about, uh, what are they called, uh, scening, staging, because uh, I have this uh, Lamenter severed hand right here holding a pistol, and I got the bloody chainsword like he just cut off uh, Lamenter's hand. You know, I thought that was real sick at the time. Hey, yeah, thank you. But yeah, if I did it again today, I'd uh, do something real similar to how I did this... Uh, uh, Red Scorpion starting with a gray base. Oh, yeah, Christopher Hamilton. Where's the lightning? Well, I didn't paint any. Because <laughs> I tried, and I kept messing it up, so I'd just paint it over and try again, and I'd paint it over and try again. Where this blue is real thick, you can see where I started. I, uh, that's... Yeah. Kept trying, kept didn't, not working out for me, so I said, I don't think uh, I'll be doing any Chaos Warbands anytime soon. Yeah, this uh, Red Corsair. Yeah, yeah, it does take a while to get confident with uh, the Lightning. This Red Corsair is actually the first Chaos Mini I painted in a week and a er, year and a half. Well, hey, 5,000 likes. Thank you all so much. But yeah, this is the first Chaos Mini I've tried in a very long time. Glad I did, but man, that trim. That trim was hard to do, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Red Corsairs are a good faction. I really like them. I'm on a Bad Ab War crit. Uh, bad up war kick right now. Yeah, the chaos trim is a nightmare. Looks dang snazzy though. Yeah, the uh, Mark III Marine armor with their trim that looks real good. I've enjoyed putting uh, Mark III pauldrons on some of my minis. You know, and doing that trim there. Yeah. Well, this uh, gun casing's almost dry. Once it is dry, I'll uh, go ahead and do the black wash. I mean, sepia wash. Rumor at the moment with the uh, Chaos Space Marine Codex is a new jump pack lord that's Night Lord theme. Yeah, I'd believe that. Uh, somebody to go alongside uh, Harkin World Ender. Oh, and of course, the Kill Team for Night Lords. That looks so cool. I could see a lot of people starting Night Lords armies now because of that. Yeah, I was real happy with all the those uh, Kill Team releases. I don't play uh, Drukhari, but... Uh, those mandrakes looked real nice, and I like that theming of Night Lords versus uh, Drukhari. That's a real compelling image. Yeah, I can't wait to paint them both. <laughs> Abel Perez, thanks for joining us tonight. Big Homie Dre, thanks for joining us tonight. Just real excited about Night Lords. Francisco Jimenez, thanks for joining us tonight. Wow, a lot of people joining us right now. Woo! But yeah, the Night Lords are... I think going to be having a lot of real good stuff coming their way besides that. Especially if they're getting a new uh, jump captain. In theory, 
according to the rumors, the, uh, oh shoot, what are they called? Uh, Emperor's Children might be the secret uh, codex release in June. I could kind of see that because it seems like uh, Fulgrim is slowly coming back into the narratives. Uh, he's gotten a couple of mentions in uh, Arts of Omen. He's gotten a couple other mentions in other places. So, plus he's the last uh, unrepresented chaos god demon primarch. Or rather, demon primarch that is uh, affiliated with a specific chaos god. Yes, yes, exactly, Christopher Hamilton. It's on point for having our four dedicated armies for chaos. Then I could see us getting, uh, oh shoot, what's his name? Uh, Perturabo first. After that, maybe an 11th sometime. Uh, and I could see Lorgar being the last one released. Because a uh, last uh, demon Primarch release because he's uh, you know supposedly the most powerful chaos sunk person on the chaos side right now, chaos invested. And you're right, Christopher. Where there's Lorgar, there's got to be Korax round the corner trying to chase him. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I am so excited for a Korax. That should be real fun. I wonder how he'll play on the tabletop, though, because, uh, you know, how, the kind of mechanics I would have expected for him uh, was given to uh, Lionel Johnson with Forest Walk. You know, I'd see him popping out of the shadows anywhere on the board. Uh, any kind of deep strike he wants. I was not expecting uh, the lion to get those uh, kind of abilities. I kind of expected him to have a lot more martial focus. Not to say that he's not martial focused enough, but uh, yeah, that insta teleport, I really expected more to be reserved for Korax. My hunch right now is if they bring back another uh, not chaos, a loyalist Primarch in the near future, uh, it'll probably be Jagged Icon. My guess is anyway. So I'm not sure what... Yeah, it's got to be the Khan. Uh, plus there's that whole... Uh, uh, narrative uh, fight between him and the... Uh, uh, shoot, what's his... Oh, yeah! Not only the Vashtor storyline, but uh, Fulgrim. They were uh, rivals during the Heresy, so that could be a lot of fun to play out. I'm not sure what abilities they'd give him. Maybe bonuses to mounted units. The catch, though, is that we really need more mounted units because we only have the, what, three units? The Outriders, the uh, Invader ATV, and the Chaplain. There's no Captain on bike. There's no Apothecary on bike. Uh, and I think even the Deathwing Command Squad is going away in the new Dark Angels Codex, so yeah, there's not even going to be the Dark Angels specific Apothecary on bike. And that's real sad. So it's like, what would the point of... Uh... Yeah, 10th is so weird right now. We really need more mounted unit support. Well, hey, 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 WH Weave, thanks for popping in tonight. Brohemian, woo, appreciate you hopping in. Dark Angel Cal, what's your fun idea for the Fallen? So 
See, while you type that up, I'm going to start uh, loading up my sepia wash. Going to move this guy off to the side for the moment. Ooh, WH Weave is working on some sky claws right now. Nice. Yeah, we're just... Yeah, we were just talking about Night Lords and other fun chaos factions a second ago. Dark Angel Kial says he's going to have his own custom wing where the Fallen have vowed to repent for their heresy. That's nice. WH Weave is starting an escalation league in March. Thomas Warden says, you're doing your very first model, the Space Marine Apothecary. That's so cool. Welcome to the Warhammer Painting family. It's a very labor-intensive hobby, but I'll tell you what, it is a fun and relaxing hobby. You make a lot of friends doing it. So congratulations. There we go, there's my sepia. And let's slowly start coating him. Oh yes, Christopher, you were right. That sepia is looking so good on the red. Yeah. Look at that little gloss to him. Nice. That sepia was the best choice. Thank you so much, Christopher, for the idea. Looking good. Well, we'll set him off to the side to dry real quick as we work on our two other models we're washing tonight. First, we'll start with this Minotaur. Boo, Minotaurs! And then we'll do this Red Scorpion. Here we go, let's maybe do 12 drops. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh no, WH Weave, uh, I'm actually not working on World Eaters. This is uh, Red Corsairs. Yeah, here on Blackheart's uh, pirate gang. Ooh, Dark Angel Kial, tell us about your Tyranid idea. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's a nice grim looking wash. Oh, you're writing a book about Red Corsair's WH Weave? Ooh, Tyranids and Hibernation, that is scary. Yeah, that is a grim looking minotaur. Let's get that base a little more. WH Weave is writing a book about a sub chapter he's creating. 
And the Corsairs are the main enemy. Nice. Ooh, I like that. See, that should be enough for the... There we go. Let's see, Christopher. I have not tried Scale 75 Metallics yet. I'll have to remember that. Here we go, slowly shading that gray bit by a bit. Don't want to overwhelm it. Ooh, Kraken Marines. And Tyranids running headlong into a smelting pool. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Let's just give this a little bit more shade to him. Layered one, thanks for following. Jeff P, thanks for joining us. Real excited to hear more about these Tyranids that are running into a smelting pool. Oh, the crosshairs. That sounds awesome, WH Weave. Yeah, you'll have to tell us more about it. Oh, no, Cal, the Tyranids adapted? Oh, shoot. Well, that is scary, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, this is a fiendish looking red scorpion. I really like how that grates. We got a nice smooth dark gray. I think it looks better than we would have done uh, either uh, Mechanica standard gray or uh, Gracier. Oh, those Krakens. <laughs> go, we'll wash out that cut real quick. Yep, yeah, that is a dark looking Minotaur. Set him off to the side. We'll set this guy off to the side a little bit. Oh, Dark Angel Kiao says he's working on some custom, getting on some custom Tyranid models. Ooh, very scary sounding. Oh, <gasps> dude, you ordered your airbrush and it showed up broken? No, dude. That is so not cool. Did you order it from Amazon? Or where did you order it from? Yeah, you need a refund, dude. That is so not cool. Yeah, if you got it from Amazon, the, uh, you know, they have a pretty good return policy. Good. I'm glad they're replacing it. Yeah, just gotta wait. Tell you what, airbrushing is a uh, Another sub-hobby within the painting hobby. It's a lot of fun to learn. I've been doing it, what, a few months now? Well, hey, we're just about at 7,500 likes. Appreciate you guys. Oh, yeah, you're priming your sky claws with a rattle can. Yeah, there's definitely time and place for rattle cans. I primed... Uh, this Vindicator with a Vallejo pink rattle can.
Let's see. Oscar the Panda says uh, he works for Amazon Delivery and definitely call to replace it. Some deliver are just evil. Yeah, I have a, a relative who works for uh, UPS. He uh, says it can get pretty rough over there sometimes. Oh, yeah, I was painting this uh, uh, Vindicator the other day, and uh, I ended up touching it before it was done drying, and I left my uh, thumbprint on it. <laughs> oh, the nozzle just won't stop spraying air. Interesting. Could be a problem with the O-ring, or that's the little black plastic ring. But, uh, yeah, no. And just, uh, it's supposed to work on delivery, so, yeah, making them replace it's probably the best move. Joel, William, and Zachary, thanks for joining us. Just painting and chilling. Yeah, it makes sense that it be the O-ring. O-rings cause a lot of problem because they're responsible for, uh, you know, safe regulation of different flows and airs. And uh, that's actually what blew up the Challenger shuttle back in 1984. Uh, an O-ring that didn't work at uh, the right temperatures. Yeah, good idea getting the full-size one, because, uh, yeah, that small handheld one that has the uh, compressor attached to it, uh, it's harder to remove, to maneuver, because it's, uh, you know, half your handle. So, yeah, getting a full-size airbrush is definitely the better move. What's up? That is such a cool username. Thanks for joining us. What's up? D does everyone uh, say it like that whenever you join a stream? What's up? Oh, hey, Malpaints. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. See, I'll give this just a minute more to dry. Let's see. WH Weave says, yeah, I looked up the reviews because I'm a big brush guy and I only want the airbrush for priming. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get a nice, even coat. No, I'm looking at this... Uh, uh, red a uh, scorpion and I'm thinking I might have the armor done tonight uh, it's such a it's a fairly simple uh, paint scheme you know yeah just gotta paint the pauldrons black give it a yellow trim and then we should be good see let me pull out my flash uh, oh dry brush guy gotcha but yeah dry brushes are a lot of fun I love slap chop I do it for my Dark Angels. Oop. There we go. Shake that up. Flash gets. Where is the... Uriel. Uriel? Yeah, actually, let's do Uriel. Uriel, then layer it with the uh, flash gets. There we go. Well, we'll work on that trim after we get those pauldrons painted. Here we go. Oh, grimdark, like heavy metal. A 
heavy metal is a lot of fun. I've tried it a few times. I have a few minis where I can say that's a decent metal. Can't call it heavy metal, but I can at least call it decent metal. <laughs> Oh, battle-worn armor. I gotcha, I gotcha. corner a little bit. Nice. And we'll get the other pauldron. Nice. Nice, good looking pauldrons. WH Weave asked, do I like Citadel paints? And the answer is, it depends on the paint. Like I love Grey Knight Steel. I really like Averland Sunset. I love Uriel Yellow and Flash Gets Yellow. Let's see, I love the oils and washes, specifically because of the pot. Um, if I'm using a contrast paint, I don't like using it oop, in one of these little bottles unless I'm specifically using it in an airbrush. I like using it in these pots because then I can just more directly control how much I use without wasting any. Yes, yes, it's very, very paint specific. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Definitely depends on the paint. Uh, like White Scar. It's a great white primer out of a rattle can. But it, and it's a great, uh, what's it called? Uh, pot paint. Uh, yeah, Citadel Nun Oil is real good. But uh, Air White Scar is not good at all. Yeah, if I have to use white in an airbrush, I either use uh, Bolt Titanium White from Pro Acryl Thin Down, or I use Army Painter uh, White Airbrush Mix, specifically. Chris, thanks for joining us. Yep. We're, re we're really close to finishing this uh, Red Scorpion. So maybe what I'll do in the meanwhile is work on his gun and face. Let's do a thin coat of Kislev Flesh. Kislev Flesh is a really nice paint out of the pot for faces because it comes off so smooth. It's almost like a wash, but with more acrylic texture behind it. So that's one thing I really like about it. So here we go. Let's just gently and slowly pile that in. I do two thin coats eventually. Here's the first coat. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I'll get to Gulliman's flesh eventually. Oh, oh! Yeah, yeah, I'll get there eventually. You know, I just like doing this as a base. Then I do Gullum and Flesh. You know, if I, uh, if his face was completely white, I would have done that. But yeah, I want this as a little base for that. Then I'll put the Gullum and Flesh over it. And then maybe another layer of this, or Raiklin Flesh, depending. Here we go, get some detail on that scar. I love it when the Gulliman Flesh uh, goes into the recesses of scars. Uh, Kalani asks what I'm painting. I am working on a Red Scorpion Space Marine, one of the veterans of the Badab War. Here we go. Here's my Gullum and Flesh. WH Weave says the wife got you the army painter set for Christmas. Nice. Makes sense that you'd lean on that most. Wow, 7,800 7, likes? You guys are amazing. Real appreciate you. Let's keep those likes coming. Thank you so much. Let's see. Here we go. Here's some lead belcher I'll use for the stock. And let's find a, a fulcrumite copper for this little uh, agula that hangs off the gun. Wow! 8,000 likes, 8,200 likes. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate you. Wow. I could do baluster gold. I don't have it, but that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, tooth and coats. I have a handful of tooth and coats. I really like his white star and his, oh, yeah, uh, sword hilt burgundy for undershading when I airbrush yellow. Oh yeah, Citadel does make some really nice Space Wolf colors. Eighty five hundred likes? Whoa! Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Ooh, Tooth and Coat's Ven Venetian Blue is pretty good. Ooh, I'll have to try it out. I like hearing that. Yeah, that head's looking pretty good. I might do one more layer of Kislev Flesh, but I do like the direction it's going. Let's see, let's work on that uh, gun stock real quick. We'll just, you know, quickly hit it with some thinned lead belcher. Yep, that's some good lead belcher, all right. Okay. 
hit that bayonet a little bit too. Nice. Maybe the grills on this backpack too. Give it a little bit of shine. Maybe I'll highlight it in Stormhost Silver. We'll see. Yeah, dark and gritty. I like it. 8,600 likes. Y'all are the best. Appreciate ya. See, let's get these pipes down here. Pipes and grills, pipes and grills. Oh, look at how it shines. Oh, that looks really nice. Geeky Lima Bean, thanks for joining us. We're getting real close to finishing this Red Corsair tonight. By Red Corsair, I mean Red Scorpion. <laughs> My bad. We did do a Red Corsair earlier tonight, though, if you want to check it out. Still have to do the eye lenses and this uh, base, but, uh, oh, and the little mouth grill. Not sure what color I'll do the eyes. Maybe some kind of green. Probably a green. Yeah, very probably a green. Eye to the deep. Yeah. Keyboards are so much fun. Oh, Into the Deep. Got it. Oh, that's the battle cry of the Kraken Marines. Nice. I like that. Oops, forgot to tighten the lid to my wash. Can't have that wash spilling, you know. Nice. So let's do another layer of Kislev Flesh on that. Drop my airbrush cleaner. Let's pick that up. Hey, 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 Death Company Chaplain in the house. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hello, Battle Brother. We're working on some Bad Ab War minis tonight. Working on a uh, Red Scorpion right now. We just, uh, Almost finished uh, Red Corsair a few minutes ago. The Folly of Huron Blackheart. Ooh, WH Weave. I like that tentacle idea. That's cool. Tentacles for days. Here we go, just another layer of Kisla Flesh real quick, real thin. Get some good highlights there. Get the chin a little better. It's okay if that chin's a little thinner because that'll be a point we want to hit real hard with the Gullum and Flesh. Nice, even looking coat. Oh, yeah, it makes sense that those tentacles would be hard to paint. Yeah. Oof.
Yeah, tentacles would be hard. That makes sense. See, let's paint this harness retributor gold. But maybe after we do the pauldrons. I think we're ready to do that pauldron trim. So let's take just a little Uriel yellow. And then we'll slowly go along the sides with the side of the brush. That should hopefully keep it nice and even. And then I immediately mess up. Isn't painting so much fun? Oh, messed it up a second time. Getting in the groove of it now. Yep, I'm going to have to touch up that the black on that pauldron a little bit, but uh, I will say it was not terrible. There we go. Let's load up some more Uriel on our brush on the side of it. Wick off that excess. And then we'll slowly do the other side. Gotta use the side of the brush. Oh, hadn't messed up this pauldron yet. Oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, oh, twice. <laughs> oh, man. I was getting a little too eager. Eager beaver. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I'll let that dry, then I'll hit it with a second coat. Ugh, oh, I am heartbroken. Let's see if I can at least get some of that off the very top. Nope, smudged it and made it worse. <laughs> All right, well, I'll touch it up again once I, once that dries. I'll put a little Rhinox hide into his hair. That'll look nice. Just a itty bitty bit of Rhinox hide. Give him a nice dark military haircut. And then when I hit it, yeah, smoothly thin that out. And then when I hit it with the Gleeman Flesh, that should look real nice. Babylon Brooks, thanks for joining us. I better pull out that uh, 
Black Templar have on standby to do touch-ups. Maybe I want a thicker paint for that, thicker acrylic. <laughs> I might have some Army Painter Matte Black. Let me look. Oh yeah, yeah, Army Painter Matte Black. That'll probably be a better one for that. See, where did I put my vortex spinner? Ah, here it is. There we go. A little thicker than a contrast paint. So let's go ahead and mix. I haven't used it in a while, so we'll probably need to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> I like what it's doing to the camera. Round and round and round we go. Where it stops, nobody knows. Nice. Set that off to the side. Gotta let that dry a little bit before I dare touch it again. Mm. Actually, that is looking about dry, so I'll do a second coat of Uriel. That's what I'll do. So you thin that down a little bit more first. Not too thin, of course, but like thin enough. Yeah, that makes sense, Dark Angel Kial. Pauldrons are. Yeah, the P in pauldron stands for painful. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, let's snip that little fiber. Pay to look good. Yep. I hear ya. Oops. And I just messed up on that pauldron again. Alvin Brown, thanks for joining us. There we go. That's looking smooth. And I messed it up again. Nice. Jay, thanks for joining us. Here we go. Let that dry before I dare hit it with the black again. So let's take a look at his face. I think it's almost ready for Gullum and Flesh. We'll just paint the stock in the meanwhile. What color should I paint that stock? Let's start with Blood Angels Red. 
And then if it looks too dark, we can try toning it up with some ball red. Because there is a little bit of red in Red Scorpion, you know? Yeah, that's looking good. We made a good choice. Oh yeah, I'm a fist in red. That probably looked good. Specifically chose a contrast paint so that the little metal sheen still shows up underneath. We'll see how it looks once it dries. See, while we wait, let's do uh, this harness in Retributor Gold. Is this Retributor Gold? Yes. Let's go ahead and mix that up. Pull out the Vortex. Yeah, nice and smooth. Very happy with that. Stick that on the pot or on the plate. Water it just itty bitty bit. Nice. Well, hey, we're almost at 9,000 likes. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, that looks good. Probably need to touch that with, uh, oh shoot, what's the name of that wash? Either Agrax Earth Shade or maybe it'll look better with this Franklin Flesh Shade. Oh, 8800, I think we're gonna make it in just a couple minutes. See, let me pour out that matte black so we can touch up the pauldron real quick. Eighty nine hundred, any second now. Any second now, I know you can do it. <laughs> We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Woo! 9,000. That is officially the most I've ever got on a live stream. 
Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Woo! Well, hey, I go live just to make you guys happy, so that really makes me feel good. Thanks, guys. Making people happy that... Oh, it's over 9,000, Regina! Nice. Hey, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And we're getting real close to finishing this Red Scorpion, too. We're hitting all kinds of benchmarks tonight. I couldn't do it without you guys. I really couldn't. Thank you. Whoa! Oh, these pauldrons are looking so good. I'll tell you what, I can see why more people don't paint red scorpions, but the colors look really, really nice. I think we're ready. I think that Kisla flush is... Oh, maybe it needs a minute more to dry. So maybe I'll do a, another coat of Mephiston Red. Not Mephiston, uh... Blood Angels Red. Oh, Blood Angels Red is such a nice contrast paint. Has a nice volume to it, but yet it's gl glean enough that it can uh, pop through most color behind it. Oh, that is a good looking gun. You like that gun, guys? Woo! 9,500 likes. I think that says a lot like, I think that says a lot right there. Thank you so much, guys. While I let that uh, a Kisla flesh dry, I'm just gonna go in and pop uh, some color in the eyes and the mouth of this Red Corsair real quick. Got a super tiny brush for that. And then we'll just pop that in the lenses and the uh, grill real quick. And that'll be enough to get us there. Of course, once that dries, I'll need to do some kind of green, I think, for the eyes. That's a nice looking eye right there. That's an okay looking eye right there. That's a much better looking eye. <laughs> and let's just do that grill real quick. And let's smudge it a little bit. Nice, that is a fearsome looking pirate. Oh, hey, 9,800 likes. I bet we can get to 10,000 in just a minute. Think we can do it, guys? Oh, that's a scary looking pirate. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, 9,900. Seriously, you guys are the best. I owe y'all so much. Let's see. Let's go ahead and start putting that Gulliman flesh on that face. Oh, any second now. This guy's going to come to life the second we hit 10,000. I know it. 
going to load up that brush. Oh, oh, I see those likes climbing. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Boom, here's that flesh. Hit that scar work. Nice, looking good. 10,000! Look at that, the big 10K. You've not only broken the record for likes on my stream tonight, you have broken it twice. Woo! Woohoo! Oh my goodness, you guys are amazing. Right as I finish the flesh on this guy, too. Oh, look at this fearsome guy. Oh. Now that is a face of a warrior you don't want to meet on the battlefield. Whoa! <laughs> nice. Oh, very nice, you guys. Oh, I sure appreciate you. And so does our uh, red scorpion right here. Don't know what to name him yet, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to give it some kind of pun related to 10,000 or 10K or... I know, Decius. Oh, there we go. Sergeant Decius of the Red Scorpions. I like it. Because Deca is uh, Latin for 10, you know. So let's put that flesh shade on that gold and on the bronze. Oh, yeah. This guy's a beast. I can feel it. <laughs> Woo! Well, I feel fantastic. I hope you guys do, too. Because I know uh, Sergeant Decius here looks fantastic. And really, it's because of you guys. It's because of you guys I do this, and it's because of you guys I put this kind of work into what I do. Well, hey, I better get headed out for the night. You Seriously, you guys are amazing. I owe you all so much. Thank you again for making this a fun stream. Look at all we got done today. Look at these guys. Yeah. Well, seriously... Love you all so much. Play hard, work hard, and I'll look forward to seeing you all Thursday night. Thanks again, guys. Bye.